Ocala's Information Station, 1370 WOCA. Ocala! Five minutes after 11 o'clock. Thank you for tuning in. Most of you know that when I was a younger guy, I played music in bars. And uh, I had my, my share of seeing people get drunk to the point where it was uh, it was not good. You know, there was fights. Not too, there weren't too many fights, but most of the time it was just uh, just embarrassing behavior that that kind of thing yeah if you were to good. if you were to watch uh tv Gross. back in those days you would have seen dean martin who made it look like it was kind of funny to to be inebriated or, or uh mm-hmm. what was that guy's name who was always that was his whole act remember oh yeah i forget what he was yeah. what his name was yeah. yeah he was always appearing to be drunk but he never was yeah i can't I can't remember his name but yeah. but anyway uh, alcohol abuse i guess you would say or alcoholism is yep. uh is um Serious. I mean, it'll turn a person who's no- a normally good person and, and ruin his life or her life. Uh, yeah. it's, not, it's not a male only problem. No, it's not. Uh, and and I, and I don't think uh, it, it's exclusive to alcohol either. I mean, it, it could be anything that you're addicted to. We're, we're going to focus on alcohol right now, but I, I think we have. I, I think I had that in me. I've never been an alcoholic, but I think I have the ability to be one. Yeah, but you're not a drinker. I'm not a drinker. Mm-hmm. I know, but I'm a I'm an Oreo holic. So if you yeah. if I open up a package <laughs> of Oreos, I'm going to eat the whole thing. So, so which is not good, you know. But but that's how I would be if I had started drinking. I think I think I would have been the guy who was always overdoing it. Uh, Dave Andrews is on the phone. He ha- has been sober for over eight years. It says here. He is known as America's number one sobriety coach. He's the leading expert in helping others recover, reclaim, and reinvent their lives without alcohol. How awesome is that? He serves on the board of directors for the nonprofit organization called Young People in Recovery and Advocates for Recovery. He's the CEO of the 30 Day Solution, and he's written a book called The 30 Day Sobriety Solution How to Cut Back or Quit Drinking in the Privacy of Your Own Home. And uh, it says here Jack Canfield helped him with that, and Jack's been a guest on our show. I'm sure you know him from the Chicken Soup for the Soul series. Yes. Dave Andrews, good morning, Dave. Good morning. Thank you for having me on. Oh, you're welcome. Where are you calling from? I'm calling from uh, Denver, Colorado. So. Nice. How is it out there? That's, I've always yeah. wanted to go there. Yeah, it's nice. It's, it's warmed up. You know, we're very excited. The Broncos got the number one seed. Manning came back in the game, you know, second half. And uh, so we're football-wise, we're very excited. And, uh, <laughs> and it's a nice place to be here, too. Oh, so you're Super Bowl material then? The Broncos? I don't think so. I don't, I don't know about that. Maybe. I, you know, it, it'll be interesting to see what happens with Manning, his last, uh, his last, his last hurrah. But um, it's it's fun to be in a town where you know you can get excited about the sports teams as well as other things too. And I can do it without drinking because usually I would have been, you know, obliterated last night drinking. Salt oh yeah, mm-hmm. I, I was th- I was thinking the same thing. Do you, do you know? Okay, so you and I have something in common. That eight year figure. Uh, for me, marks the end of cigars. I was cigaring it up a lot back in those days. And uh, good for you. Feel better, I bet. Healthier. I still crave it though. And, and oh, so yeah. the answer is yes. But when I see, and, and that's what I was going to ask you, are you like me with with drinks? I mean, like I see a cigar and I said, "Gosh, you know what? I mean, it, would it hurt to have one?" And, and and I don't know. I mean, would it would it put me right back into that same thing? And do you stay away from alcohol completely? I do, and it's not necessarily the case. I actually feel like I could drink normally, but it's not something I'd ever really recommend to most people. Some people can. It depends where you catch it. Like for you, for example, I mean, just just on, you know, just talking about that briefly. There's. The reason you crave it very likely is you think of cigars, and I'm guessing the first thing that comes in your mind are images, positive images around when you've smoked cigars. Like sure. You've had, yeah, and so, and so there's, a, there's, a, there's an emotional connection to it, right? So what, one of the things we do, of course, is we help people change those images, and, and we help people get to the, you know, because a lot of it's subconscious. I mean, you just think of cigars, and you want it. So the, the story I love to share, which is really um, a study that was great, was they had um, – people go into a wine, uh, a, a grocery store that sold wine, and they sold only French and German wine. One day, and this was done specifically for the study, it was really cool, one day they would play German music, but another day they'd play French music, kind of going back and forth, and they tabulated the results. On days they played French music, something like 73% of the people bought French wine. Really? They played German music, 78% bought German wine. 
And, and the, 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 the moral behind that is that we make a lot of decisions without knowing it. It's not like these people constantly said, oh, French music, I want French wine. It's just that we have so much going on around us that a lot of our decisions are conscious, unconsciously driven. And so, like, with cigars, you think of a cigar, you don't really say, oh, and it's just this connection, because in the background, you're, you're connecting all of these past events, and, and, you know, you treated that like a celebratory thing and things like that. So we're, we work with people to really change those links and associations so it it's becomes easy. It's not easy at first, but part of that is uncovering who you are, what makes you tick, and then kind of sh- using very powerful techniques to shift that. The, uh, the idea of... Um uh, losing your family because of scars, however, is not as likely as losing your family because of alcohol. I mean, you literally could... Uh, did that happen to you? Did you have a devastating... The, the, did your wife leave yeah. you or threaten to leave you or anything like she that? She did. Well, she went, yes. Yeah. So, I mean, it was interesting. And, and thankfully, you know, I, I love the power of standards. We all have standards we set in our life. I'll never do this. I'll never do that. And, and some of us really live up to those. One standard I set, for whatever reason, thank goodness, is I said I'll never let uh, my relationship with my wife and because of alcohol. And so at, so at a certain stage where I had been trying to quit for eight years and doing everything except for like what I considered the bottom, which was like AA, I, you know, going into a room of people was like my worst nightmare, sharing my weaknesses. And, mm-hmm, mm-hmm. and I, my wife, though, clearly was moving on. I mean, it was clear. She went to a divorce lawyer, I later found out, but I didn't know that, but I knew how she was being with me, that it was, she was done. And um, and so I, I, I thankfully that was enough for me to get as real as I had to finally get. And then when I started to really try to quit, that's when it really showed showed up. It showed up how powerful that addiction was. And I would I would be sober for a bit, and then I just totally binge and 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 would puke where I used to never puke and, and things like that. And it was mm. a, and, and I went through a long phase of uh, I struggled, but um, I was able to come out the other side. And only because thankfully I had a I had a an epiphany, so to say that. Um, allowed me to see what I needed to do to stay on the other side because um, everything I was doing, including AA and 12 Steps and having all these sponsors, just wasn't working for me, and that's nothing against AA. It just wasn't working for me. And did you feel like you were able to um, manipulate people when you were drinking and then uh, you would tell them, oh, I'm, I'm going to quit, I'm not going to do this, and then you would feel like people trying to feel sorry for you and then you thrived on, on that aspect of it? There's some of that. I, for me, I that wasn't my um, that wasn't my kind of modus operandi, so to say. I mean, I uh, I definitely I I authentically wanted to quit, and when I shared that, it was it was true that I wanted to. However, though, there was very you know, none of us mean to enable. That's the last thing that we mean to do. But what what happens is like what you talked about is sometimes people start playing the victim, right? So they become, right. you know, they become the victim, and, and guess what happens? The problem is, is that we don't realize we're doing it, but the people that are supporting them are actually giving them what they're looking for. They're reinforcing that behavior, and, and in a lot of ways, I, I, I think it sounds messed up in some ways when you say that, but the truth is that as an individual, you don't realize you're really doing that. That's not your goal. You just know that you need certain needs met, and they're getting met by acting a certain way, and all that happens really bef- below your awareness for the most part, and it's powerful. Dave Andrews is our guest. His book is called The 30-Day Sobriety Solution, and I want to be sure we uh, are fair to the book because for the listeners who really, truly want to be sober, I, yes. I really think this is an important and uh, obviously an important topic. But I wanted to ask you about the 30 days. Um, for me, let's see, I'm going to relate it to cigars again. Well, it's been eight years, and I mm-hmm. still think about it, especially if I... It's like if I see an imagery, there was a, there was a, on comedians and cars getting coffee. The Jerry Seinfeld thing he does, he's in a yeah. he's in a cigar lounge with um oh gosh uh, Steve Steve um uh, Carell. S- uh, what's the guy's name from the Family Feud? Steve Harvey. Steve. No, uh, is that his name Steve Harvey? It might be. I Steve think it Harvey, is. Yeah. But anyway, so they're they're smoking big cigars, and I thought, oh man, I want to do that. <laughs> It, it, yep. it easily could have, easily could have, and not not that it would ruin my life if I had a cigar, mm-hmm. but uh, you know, in in the in the quest to to stop doing it, it seems like the more time that passed, the more I would be sabotaging a good thing if I if I started again. So in other words, thirty days later, I could have easily started again and thought, ah, I'm not really sabotaging much. It's only been a month. Do you know what I mean? Absolutely, and so a couple things you're talking about which are interesting. And first of all, one is um, is this whole the way I equate it to is a couple things. One is with with AA and a lot of the more socially accepted, more more used techniques to get sober. 
we draw a line in the sand and we say absence is the only way. And it's also it's very um, it's very it's very uh, closed off to the people that really want to get help because the biggest fear of anyone that wants to get sober is they are afraid they can't be happy and sober. They, they, their biggest goal is they, they want to be a normal drinker again. They ask any problem drinker, their dream is, I just want to be a normal drinker. And so when yeah, we tell right. them you can never drink again the rest of your life, we, as a culture, we really just we scare the heck out of them. For me, I was terrified. I was like, there's no way. There's no way. And, and so part of the 30 days we talk about is, A, first of all, people can, okay, 30 days, I can handle that. B is we say cutting back because some can cut back, and that truly is the case. We're not lying about that. And it's important that people know that because otherwise they just scare themselves on you know on irrationally thinking that this is the decision for the rest of their life when it's far easier than they're making it out to be in their I got gotcha. you. Yeah, that does yeah, make and sense. And then um, your your 30-day thing which is interesting, most likely what happens is partly so when you quit, why did you quit? Did you quit because it, you had some things that weren't making you happy about it or is there someone expressed concerns? What 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 prompted you to quit smoking cigars? Okay, I, I don't want to take up all your time, but I'll tell you real quickly. I mean, a a every time you're smoking anything, you you're aware that I mean, every message about smoking indicates that you could get cancer and your mouth could fall off. You could die. Yeah. And nobody worries about dying. You know what they worry about? They worry about their face falling off. Yeah. yeah. You know, that's that's a to me a stronger message. But for me personally, what happened is between Christmas and New Year's, I had a cold. And back in those days, I would never smoke a cigar when I had a cold because it just didn't taste good. By the 3rd of January, I was already uh, getting over the cold, and I thought, gosh, I haven't smoked a cigar all this year. Like, you know, that, that silly thing from grade mm-hmm. school. So I thought, wow, I haven't, so I've, I've kind of quit. And so that was kind of my little in, in incentive, yeah. I guess. But you talk for a yeah. living. And if you oh, and I talk for a, I talk for a living. That was yeah. part of it, too. Yeah. yeah. If you lost your voice, yeah. that wouldn't be good. So it, it, and it's a great analogy, so you're not taking up the time. I think it's actually a wonderful analogy. There's not quite the same, like you talked about some of the same power and, and life stuff, but the, the, it's a great analogy because what happened is, so for example, this is a very typical what an alcoholic goes through, problem drinker, especially right now, the new start of the year. They will drink during the holidays. I used to do this all the time. And then I'd be like, screw it, I'm not quitting during the holidays. I'm just accepting myself for who I am, and I'll be a drunk all holiday, and I'll quit in the New Year's resolution. Mm. Well, I won't quit on my New Year's resolution. I'll quit after the first weekend of my New Year's because, mm. you know, I don't want to, you know, quit. I can't not drink on New Year's Day. Come on, you know, and then I have to get to the weekend. So, yeah, yeah. you know, Monday, that's the time when people usually, this is the time where a lot of people will quit. Reason being, though, is they have a lot of pain. They, you know, people around them are like sick of it. You're sick of it. You feel like crap. You, you're, you're taking, taking more alcohol to feel the same way. Same with you with cigars. There's a lot of stuff going on, and there's a lot of pain associated with it. So it's easy to say I'm done because there's pain, and we will do twice as much to avoid pain as we will to gain pleasure. So that's an important, um, that's an important point because this also is how this is also like a willpower thing we talk about. Um, so at that point when you quit, there's not really much willpower. It's easy. The further you get away from that pain, the more your brain starts to create all these positive images and go back and say, mm. oh, it was so great. And, and, you, and the pain is removed because you're starting to feel healthy, your, your voice, your skin, whatever. It looks better. And although you're creating a positive association with not smoking, you're also very far removed from the pain that got you to stop in the first place. And if you do nothing else and you just stop and you have now this, you know, some of the positive benefits of not doing it, um, but you're far removed from the pain – it be, it's why you still feel some craving. And that's, that's kind of what we get down, is we get down to the kind of the subconscious level and the other level and the, and the kind of the more automatic level and all the other tools we use to change what you're talking about. So that craving is gone. I mean, we hear all the time from our graduates, you know, the desire to drink is gone. And that's because, you know, we know based off science and other things what to do and how to teach people to do these things to make long-lasting changes. And, and so what you're talking about is a perfect example of what any alcoholic goes through is that they get removed from the pain and they have all and they still think of the pleasure around their around their use and slowly but surely it's kind of like you're steering a boat that has a, a autopilot going one way and you're and and you're holding it the other way and you know um, you just keep holding it that way and you can only hold yeah. on so long even yeah. if you're even if you're the rock and uh, and even if you have all the Oreos you can eat in the world to uh, keep your <laughs> Um, you know, you're going you're gonna to let go eventually. And that's the same thing. So, so with you, I, you know, I would say, yeah, you could do our program easily, and you could pro- use the same techniques. I've had people use the techniques for weight loss and for bulimia and for all kinds right, of stuff. Right. We started at alcoholism because it's my story and, and a lot of Jack's family story. Um, but it, it works to do the same thing. You can quit cigars completely. You can quit alcohol completely. You, you really can't quit eating completely. Uh, and, and so it's, it's a little bit different. We, we had a guy on one time. He told us he was a sex addict. Um, and I thought, wow, how do you 
how do you fix i mean how do you not do that i mean it, it i don't know i didn't understand in, in my well I, I won't get into it but 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 anyway it was it's, it's like a similar thing though I, and just to be you know real quickly it's it's a it's a release of chemicals in your brain dopamine and that's the same thing alcohol does it takes over and releases those pleasure chemicals the mm. happy chemicals they call them and sex all these other addictive behaviors cigar all that not only does it be done is it done by the chemicals but it's also done by just your brain and your your the placebo effect that yeah, you yeah. you know what you want to experience so you almost just create it you could smoke a I, the, you know, it's the kind of thing I could drink something that's not alcohol, and I would get a temporary buzz if I thought it was alcohol. If I truly thought it was alcohol, now I, I would probably notice after a little bit, but because just that that psychological. Oh really? And, and yeah, yeah, absolutely, and it's very common. Placebo effect messes up studies all the time with with you know uh, with, from pharmaceutical studies because so many people will take the placebo and have the same or better or as good results as the as the actual um as the actual medicine and it's it's crazy the 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 real important uh thing that we need to remember and I, i'm not reminding you dave i'm reminding me and myself actually me and robin uh your book literally will change lives. Your book literally will make people's lives better, not just for the person who is the alcoholic, but for the, everybody in that person's family. Um, not not to mention perhaps maybe saving some lives along the way that don't get killed because of a, of a dry, drunken driving or something of that sort. Uh, I, when we come back, I, I have to take a little break. So when we come back, I'm going to make sure we focus on the book specifically. Um, the 30 Day Sobriety Solution is the book. Dave Andrews is the author. He himself has, uh, he's writing from experience. Oh, yeah. Eight years ago, yeah. he was not the same guy he is today, um, but he, he changed his life around. He's going to share how he did that in the book. And with us a little bit, when we come back, we'll take a little break and be right back. The weather is brought to you by MyFWC.com. Safe boating is no accident. It will be partly sunny and cool this afternoon. I 64 to 67 clear to partly cloudy and cool tonight. Low 46 to 54. Breezy on Tuesday. Expect partial sunshine to 65 to 70. Wednesday, clouds will make breaks for sunshine. High 69 to 73. From the Florida Weather Center, I'm Jeremy Pearson. Get it for less at the DIY Home Center Outlet. Get top quality real wood cabinets the same or less than the big box stores are selling the cheap stuff. And that's not all. Drywall Screws big box stores are $6.47 a pound at DIY only $4.99. Plus DIY has the largest selection of mobile home parts and accessories anywhere. From carpet to doors, get the DIY supplies you need for less. The DIY Home Center Outlet. We are your building material closeout store. 2191 Northwest 10th Street, just two miles east of I-75. The very best in quality is Captain T's upholstery. Hey, this is Dan. Let me ask you a few questions. Does your boat look better with the cover on? Has your car's interior seen its better days? Stop using a towel to cover up those rips in the golf cart. Isn't it about time you had it restored to better than new? with custom upholstery from Captain T. Captain T's upholstery has been right here in Ocala for nearly 20 years, so they know how to make your ride one of a kind. Whether you want to take that classic ride back to a factory look or put your favorite sports team front and center, Captain T's upholstery is who to call. 352-369-1810. That's 352-369-1810. Or stop by their location. 5030 South Pine Avenue in Ocala, just past the drive-in. And of course, don't forget to visit them on the web, CaptainTUpholstery.com. The very best in quality is Captain T's Upholstery. All right, uh, 23 minutes after 11 o'clock, Dave Andrews is on the phone. He's known as America's number one sobriety coach. He has been sober for over eight years, and he's written a book to help those who need help in this field, in this area. Uh, the 30-Day Sobriety Solution is the title of the book, co- co-authored, by the way, by Jack Canfield. And uh, I'm going to have some chicken soup today, by the way. Yes. See how, see how easily I'm influenced? I know. <laughs> if, J- if Jack Canfield had, said, had written a book about cigar smoke, and I just, oh, gosh. I mean. <laughs> <laughs> but uh, uh, he was making a, a very interesting point during the break that it seems like smoking and uh, alcohol go hand in hand, and they seem to warrant being with each other. It's, it's an addictive behavior that, uh, that, that you connect and you get a positive, um, you get a positive chemical fix, a chemical connection. Your brain gets you know, the happy chemicals to, to provide that. So, um, and that, that is absolutely key. And, you know, what I want to, sh- I want to say one thing that you kind of touched on at the end of the last segment, which I thought was interesting. And the exciting thing about this program is 
I did it for myself at first, and my life changed remarkably, and then I thought, wow, I need to maybe see if other people would. Three of the first four people that did it are sober today. This was launched in 2010 online. Is that right? And these people had failed with all kinds of stuff. I mean, I couldn't believe, I was, I was truly, like, honored and, and, uh, and, uh, and kind of blown away about the results people were getting. I didn't realize it was going to be that powerful. And, and the reason, you know, I'm, I'm lucky enough to be here and help other people is simply because the feedback I kept getting was positive, and I kept integrating feedback I got, saying, oh, we need this, we need this. And then Jack Kate got involved right before the 2010 launch, supported me and was involved and, and, and helped to add some of his value then, and then got, you know, he kept seeing the success of community. He's like, okay, I need to get on board with all of his family members that struggle with addiction. And so um, that's kind of how that came about from the first version. And that's why we have so many great success stories we can include in the book and, and share. Can a book help somebody become sober, or, or will the book be a, a supplement, let's say, to a program like uh, AA? That is a great question, and yes and no is the answer. So me, my belief in what I've experienced as just a book itself, it's hard to really help someone make profound change, but that's why we did what we did. So the book is integrated, tightly integrated with a companion website, which is a membership website. My whole background is in, it's almost like I was kind of meant to be in this place because it was interesting. My whole background's in IT and, and engineering and development. And so uh, when I first launched the program, it was all audio-based. I took people through guided guided imagery and other things to help break away associations, get awareness. And those were critical for success, from my experience. And so what Jack and I did is we said, well, let's just put it together. So we have this great book, and instead of offering a DVD with it, we have this amazing membership website, which is no extra cost. And on the membership website, we have accountability tools, we have email reminder lists, we have all the guided recordings that are, you know, life-changing. And, you know, and, got to rec- and I got to record them in a studio with Jack, you know, in Florida, with, or in uh, California, which was amazing. And so that, that, that is kind of the whole, that's the model that works. We know that works. Now, just a book, it's a little harder, but when you have the book, you have audio, visual, you tie in all the different modes of how each person learns and learns differently, it, it's, it truly is amazing, and it is life-changing. And as I say, you can't go to a therapist one hour a week very easily and get rid of an addictive behavior. It's just not enough time. But when we give someone a program to do, you know, an hour, half hour to hour and a half a day of work and exercises to do over 30 days, it is amazing how, yeah, how yeah. much you can build on each day. That's, and, and that's why I think, that, I mean, that's the part that resonates as, it rings true for me when, when I hear that, that just do a little bit each day and after a while it becomes a habit or yeah. mm-hmm. an anti-habit or something. And yeah. uh, two, you have to have this uh, communication because um, drinking is uh, really supposed to be regarded as uh, entertainment or enjoyment for adults. But the youth uh, totally... They, they, you know, we we've we've seen cases where elementary age school students are are alcoholics, and that's what's uh, a, another thing impressive about you is that you're on the board for you for young people in recovery, and it's it's very very important to reach out to them as well. Yeah, the youth is. I mean, it's critical. And it was, I, a while back, I did interviews more for fun of it about pro- prohibition and why we should go back to prohibition, and I'm not really sure I believe that, but it was interesting to play devil's advocate because. What happens is we do inundate our culture with drinking references and bars on every corner and liquor stores on every corner. And that's how it was in my neighborhood, alcohol. by the way, when I grew yeah. up. <laughs> how can you not? How can you not idolize those that drink and also idolize in some ways alcohol? We as a culture, uh, you know, just do that in general. And I mean, being Florida, it's interesting. You know, Florida, you know, having the history of the drug trade. I, I read, I saw another document the other day, which I thought was amazingly interesting, is how much behind. Um, the alcohol, alcohol, positive alcohol laws, the, uh, all of the cartel are. And the reason being is, uh, you could probably guess why, but the reason being, and I, I never put two and two together, so it's kind of a shock to me to hear this, is that because alcohol is, the re- is, is one of the most likely ways to get someone to relapse with drug addiction. Oh, and really? So, and so, they're, so they talk about the connection of the cartels and everything and how they, are, they do a lot to support alcohol, pro, pro-alcohol laws and things like that because it actually helps them keep people addicted to drugs. And so I thought, that was, wow, really fascinating. But not really a surprise when you think about it because it's, you know, it, um, it, is, it is, we all do things when, at least I did when I was drinking, that I, that I regret So because it lowers your inhibition in some ways. I, I've known some people who, who are incredibly intelligent, incredibly talented, and have lost jobs because of alcoholism and ruined their lives, lost yeah. their families. Uh, before that happened, and the family, it's, uh, forgiveness is a hard thing. You, it's yeah. hard. Sometimes it never happens. So before you need that forgiveness, Stop it. Just just figure out a way, and this book will help you. Uh, so before we run out of time, we've got 15 seconds. Dave, how do we get the book? 
Uh, go to T as in the, 330D as in day, so the30day.com, T30D.com. Easiest way, we have a great little deal we're offering and some good bonus stuff. Okay, uh, and we will put this video up online so that people can share it. Thank you so much, Dave Andrews. We'll be right back. At O'Neill, a shaky start to the new year on Wall Street. Stocks sharply lower with the Dow down close to 400 points after big declines overseas. The Shanghai Composite Index was down almost 7% and halted. Weak manufacturing numbers out of China, coupled with tensions in the Middle East.